And hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. I am Wade Bates. In the next hour or so, we are going to go inside Marion University Athletics to take a look at what's going on behind the scenes as all the great Marion University Sabre programs try to excel through this winter sports season. We're going to talk with Reed Mayberry right off the bat. He is the men's lacrosse coach as they get ready for their inaugural season, the 2017-2018 academic year. Also, we're going to talk women's hockey with head women's hockey coach Jamie Kivy. Also, Lindsay Stranis, the reigning Defensive Player of the Week in the NCHA. She'll join us to talk about what she's been uh, doing this season for the Sabres in the net. We've got Mark Boyle, the veteran men's basketball coach, going to join us uh, tonight, along with junior center Alex Manhart. And we talk Marion women's tennis with head women's tennis coach Marcus Wiegert and player Meg Hartzell. That's all coming up in the next hour on the Marion Sports Network. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T, fast. Kick things off on the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network as we talk some Marion University lacrosse as we bring in head coach Reed Mayberry. Coach, the season for Marion lacrosse, I guess the inaugural season, doesn't get going until the 17-18 school year, but you've been hard at work trying to get the program ready for their first match. Exactly, yeah. So I've been uh, recruiting this entire year, um, kind of developing a, a roster and that entire team for that uh 2017 2018 spring so coach when did you get hired here at marion so i was hired directly after uh president Mannion actually came on board as well so i was hired in uh late may or middle of may um i actually stayed on the uh i was in philadelphia for the past three years um i actually stayed in philadelphia after i was hired and went all the way up and down the uh the east coast from um all the way up to maine all the way down to florida as well a um, couple events back uh, west here in Milwaukee, Chicago, but um, mostly stayed out on the East Coast because that's just that's just because where lacrosse is. Yeah, we'll um, talk a little bit about that in a second. But what about yourself? I mean, have you had a lot of stops on the lacrosse coaching scene? Or how'd you get into lacrosse? Yeah, so I got into lacrosse. Um, hopefully my baseball guys don't hate me too much for this. My older brother was on his way to, uh, to baseball practice and uh, passed by a lacrosse game. And um, to be honest, the rest was history. Um, my older brother, I always wanted to be just like him. Um, he started playing lacrosse. I got into lacrosse. And then uh, the rest was history, I guess. So, and so you started playing at, at the high school level? I actually started playing when I was in third grade okay so very very young um i was uh after i yeah, played all throughout high school as well um, i went to salisbury university for one year after i graduated in high school it's on the eastern shore of maryland um was lucky enough to win a national championship there my freshman year um and then i transferred to roanoke college which is in southwest virginia finished up my playing time there so. and was coaching something you always had interest in or how did you yeah. end up in the coaching team? so i knew i was going to be a coach when i was in middle school drawing up lacrosse plays and, and math class and not really paying attention a whole lot so um um, I always knew I wanted to be a coach from from a very early age. Well, um, coach, lacrosse at Marion University, obviously in the state of Wisconsin, there's not a lot of lacrosse being played. Just uh, can you give us a, before we kind of talk about the state of lacrosse and even the Midwest, but to tell, give us a general overview of what lacrosse is and, and yeah. how, how the whole game works for people yeah, that aren't so. familiar. So the best way to describe it, it's uh, it's very similar to the flow of soccer. It's kind of like an open sport where um, not a lot of whistles. It has the physicality of football. Um, X's and O's wise, I would say it's very similar to basketball. Um, on each end, there's um, only six six guys, if that makes sense, on one team. Um, so it's kind of similar to basketball. You just add another guy and you can actually go behind the net, which is a little bit different. But um, it has the skill of hockey, the physicality of um, football, um, very similar to basketball as well. So um, kind of a mixture of all of those sports. I think um, we had talked. We had talked a few times earlier, and I told you the, my my 
my exposure to lacrosse is in the late 80s, early 90s, the Gates boys. Oh, I yeah. mean, they were from Syracuse. Mm -hmm. I think they were on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and that's yes, kind of like the Gretzky yeah. of hockey. Would that be fair to say? Exactly. I would call them like the uh, the first family of lacrosse, okay. I would say. Um, so, yeah, Gary and Paul Gate were um, kind of, they've revolutionized the game, to be honest. There's one national championship. I think it was 89 national championship that was also televised. It was one of the first ones. And um, that's kind of attributed to the growth of the sport. Watching that, um, lacrosse is a fun sport, and even if you don't really know the rules or anything, it's just entertaining to watch. It's so fast-paced, it's so physical, there's so much skill that um, that game really helped propel lacrosse and nationally, putting sure. it on TV. And, so. and you mentioned that a lot of lacrosse is played on the East Coast, maybe some on the West Coast as well. Mm -hmm. How is lacrosse, what's the state of lacrosse, not only in Wisconsin, but in the Midwest? Yeah, so it's definitely a, uh, it's a growing sport. So when I was growing up on the East Coast, I'm from right outside of Washington, D.C., I feel like it's very attributed to what's happening here in the Midwest. So um, it's still an up-and-coming sport um, right outside of D.C., and I think that's very similar to what's going on here. There's right at 34 um, varsity teams, high schools in Wisconsin that have lacrosse. Um, so it's definitely growing. It's not an official state sport, but as I've been talking to high school coaches in the area, that's definitely in the near future. So um, very exciting time. They kind of break ground here. There's a lot of untapped talent that a lot of other college coaches don't really know about just because they just assume that it's not as developed here. So. What type of athlete makes a good lacrosse player? What? Uh, I mean, obviously the, uh, the physicality is a big thing. Um, you can't coach size. I always say that. So having those physical attributes are phenomenal. But um, the big thing is the endurance. Obviously, it has the endurance aspect of soccer where it's always free-flowing. You're running a lot. Um, but the big one, I would say, is just having that athletic IQ. Um, and being able to, um, the skill of lacrosse and having that hand-eye coordination is huge, but also being able to execute and know what's going on and think on your feet while you're running and getting hit a lot is, is huge. What, so. is, what, is, what numbers do you need to really get the program going? What are you looking for? So right now we're looking for that first year. We're looking to get right at like 20, 25 guys. Um, ideally by year two and three, we're going to be right at like 40 to 45 guys. If you look at a lot of uh, like top division three programs, they're right around that same size. So that's what we're aiming for. And is there, I want to ask you, there's a lot of competition, but a uh, startup program, does that intrigue uh, players? And how do you pitch that saying, hey, you're going to be part of something brand new here exactly. at the university? Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, it kind of sells itself, to be honest. The fact that these guys could come in and start, possibly start for four years or compete for a starting spot um, is very appealing to a lot of guys. Um, with the, all the new buzz with President Mannion and all the new athletic facilities that are coming in, um, it's a great time to become a Sabre, obviously. Um, and that kind of sells itself, as I said. And we can't talk about recruits in general, but like I said, you, I know we were just talking to you, you have been working recruits all, probably not only all over the country, but all yes, probably the, the, the world looking for people to come to Marion and when you when you when you call them on the phone or I, don't, I don't know exactly know what you can do <laughs> I don't break when you make contact when you're allowed to make contact with mm -hmm. certain recruits what do you tell them um, I just tell them my story, to be honest, and what Marion is, what, what Marion University is about. Um, not having a program on campus now, it is a challenge, but at the same time, the product that Marion University is producing is phenomenal. Um, I've only had the chance of playing or coaching with about five or six professional lacrosse players. So sure. it's not like a lot of these guys that I'm going to be coaching are becoming professional lacrosse players. So what I'm really selling them or providing them is a service of helping them become a professional and something other than sports or whatever that cheesy NCAA slogan is, but it, it, there's some truth to that. Sure. So, How many times have you been to Wisconsin before you got hired here at Marion? This moment, I came from my interview, that was the first time that I'd ever been to the great state of Wisconsin. So you, I had my first cheese curds then too, and I would never gone back. So you realize that there's not a foot of snow in July? Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's contrary to most people's beliefs. Um, there's snow on the ground right now, but gorgeous summers here. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Speaking of snow on the ground, talk about when your season runs from when to when and how many games you play and, and, and yeah. all the challenging weather can be here in Wisconsin and even I guess in the Northeast it's the same for, for lacrosse. Yeah, exactly. So there's, uh, I mean, Northeast is really a hotbed for lacrosse. That's where a lot of the colleges are, a lot of the high schools are. And I mean, they have the same challenges that we do here. They call lacrosse a spring sport, but to be honest, it's played in January and February, March not really spring weather in that time. So um, really lucky to, uh, to have all the new facilities coming. It's obviously going to be a challenge, but we have Lentz Fieldhouse. We have our new turf field coming as well. So um, definitely looking for some tough guys that aren't afraid to get out there in the cold weather and uh, been able to find a bunch of them. So how, really big, about that. how big is that Lentz Fieldhouse? I mean, when you, when you talk to potential student mm -hmm. athletes about coming to Marion University saying, hey, we have an indoor facility where we can get some workouts and inside, even oh, yeah. if it's 20 below zero, it's not just, and it's not just a gym. It's actually got turf and you kind of get a feel for how yeah. things will go in general. It's phenomenal, obviously. They, they love it. I didn't have any athletic facilities like that when I was growing up at, at, at my colleges. So um, to be able to have that is, is phenomenal. Um, not only to obviously hold practices in there, but also get your individual work in and go in there and get your shooting, your footwork, all the cardio and uh, kind of agility footwork you can do. And 
not, as you said, below 20 degrees. So, and so when obviously you're, you're getting recruits right now, as we talk, you know, building a team, when can the team actually get together as a team officially for the first time? <laughs> so yeah, we're having a, a bunch of the guys that have already committed come back in January for a hockey game, just kind of get the team together, introduce everybody and get the team camaraderie growing. So I'm really excited to get all those guys on campus again. Um, but the, the biggest thing that we'll have is that first day of school. Um, the first day everyone comes on campus with all those freshmen, we'll have a bunch of, uh, we're going to have our first men's lacrosse meeting, I guess, if that makes sense. And thank you so much, Coach Mayberry. It's going to be fun to see the Marion University lacrosse team uh, take fruition and become an official sport, I guess, on campus coming up in the next year. Again, Reed Mayberry, Marion men's lacrosse coach on the Marion Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. Listen up, Energy Hogs. We got a real porker of a house here. Get in there and waste some energy. There's no insulation, boss. It's hog heaven. Leaky windows, too. This is going to be a breeze. Perfect. Go wild and waste some wattage. <laughs> Time to tan. Oh, there's hot water for just one pair of pants. <sighs> My kind of place. Wow, this thing's so old it's going to take me hours to get dry. <laughs> Keep wasting. They'll never know what hit them till they get the energy bill. <laughs> Boss, they're home, and they've got energy-efficient balls. Ah! You've got the power to get rid of energy hogs. You can help your parents add insulation, put in Energy Star appliances, and lots of other things to make your home hog-free. Find out how at energyhog.org, and play fun games, too. Oh, retreat! Retreat! Go to energyhog.org and get the energy hogs out of your home. Hey, wait for me! The Marion Coaches Show continues here on the Marion Sports Network. I am Wade Bates. We're going to talk women's hockey right now and bring in head women's hockey coach Jamie Kimmy. Coach, heading into the uh, holiday break, your team's got an unbeaten streak of two games. Just, do you like how you're playing? Yeah, right now, I mean, we wrapped up against Eau Claire on Saturday and we pulled off a tie, um, took them into OT with uh, Sarah Beer, our captain, scored with three minutes to go. So um, beating St. Norbert and then being able to tie against Eau Claire, who's been successful this um, first half of the season, was a big momentum swing for us, confidence builder too. Um, so I was very excited and happy with the first half and how far we've come. You were telling me that Emily Everson had a a great opportunity at the end of overtime where she nearly uh, found a way to find the back of the net. Yeah, that was uh, uh, it was good. Obviously, the buzzer clearly went off before she took that shot, but she was on a little breakaway and um, was able, she heard the buzzer and still took the shot and went in. It was actually a nice it was a nice shot, but uh, it's one of those things. If the game was maybe an extra second, ex, extra second or two, um, that could have been a win for us. How about the win over St. Norbert? The first time uh, the Marion women's program has beaten St. Norbert, I believe it was like 14 0 3. How big was that for your program to get a victory over the, the rival just to the north? Uh, you know what, just the confidence that uh, coming in and being able to fight back against St. Norbert and finally getting a win because I know last year we finished off with, uh, I believe, two ties against them. So it's finally nice to see, I mean, especially for our upper, upperclassmen who've, um, I mean, traditionally we have lost those games, so finally to get the win and uh, it's kind of speaks volumes for our program and how far we've come because it's one of those things each year we're building and building and finally um, this year it's like one of those things where it's we're competing and it's nice getting the wins where, like I said, typically we've found a way to either tie it or lose that. So well, It seems like uh, me just observing your squad this season, it seems like there is a confidence to your, your team this year out there, you know, no matter who they're playing, it's like they feel like they belong and they can compete with them. For sure. It's one of those things things where I tell the kids shift by shift and if you have a bad shift make sure the next one you you come back and you fight and it's how you respond and I think too um, our goaltending Lindsay Stranus has been phenomenal for us and uh, our one line with freshman Allie Fox and sophomore Haley Miller and senior uh, Emily Everson they've been producing every single game and it's one of those things where you look to them to produce and uh, it's kind of nice where it's been consistent and the kids have been clicking the team chemistry has been there and I uh, I think the culture within the locker room too, it's healthy, it's fun, and there's no drama. So from a coach's perspective, it's been a lights out first half, even though, I mean, there's some games we would like to play again and see if there's a different outcome. But overall, we're trending in the right direction. You mentioned the chemistry. One of the things that I've noticed, because I'm usually prepping for our game upstairs at the blue line. And your team is in there, and they look like they're a tight-knit group that really loose before games, but they look like a group of girls and women that really like being around each other. Uh, they do, and it's 
it's enjoyable from us at times. There's times where I have to say settle down, and uh, but even I mean, it's the bus rides are fun. It's fun going to the ice for skill sessions and games where the kids enjoy it. And I was like, when you have the chemistry and they're healthy and it's they're having fun in the locker room. I mean, the next step is having success on the ice. So uh, that's one thing for sure. I was like, the girls are close and it's a family, so it's a good atmosphere. One of the, they, they do something in a circle to get ready where they like they all take. Their, I'm, I'm going to learn that, you know, and I want to jump in that circle and, and, and I'm trying to learn all the words to what they do to get fired up for a game. And I'm going to just jump in there when I can see what kind of reaction I get. I have not seen this. Um, I'm usually doing my own thing, um, but I'm sure it's probably very interesting to watch. Um, maybe one time I will sneak out to catch it, but uh, it's probably, I can only imagine. You, you mentioned the Lindsay Strain, she's been honored a couple times this year as uh, the defensive player of the week in the league. Uh, how hard is it at the Division Three level to find a good goalie? It's one of those things. If you have a goalie that's consistent, um, you can make a break of your season. And for us, it's one of those things where um, we've always had a goalie coach, I mean, the last few years, and now bringing in uh, Tyler Lewis, he's brought, I mean, that extra attention he's on he comes to our games home and away and he's working with the goalies extra sessions too so it's one of those things I was never a goaltender um, I don't know a single thing about goaltending so I can't even help her out in that one so I'm like guys here is someone that you can talk to and he can be um, useful for you guys but yeah Lindsay's been lights out for us and even to uh, Maddie Dixon our senior when she's been given the opportunity she's uh, she's been fighting so it's been fun to have both of them kind of healthy competition back and forth but again Lindsay has been uh, lights out for us you like the second half of the season you guys to make a push and move up the standings and you know maybe do some damage in the whole season. Yeah, we have a lot of conference games left. Uh, we we wrapped up against Adrian um, in the first half, but we still have Lake Forest, Galaska, CUW, St. Norbert, Finlandia, all for two. So it's one of those things where we need to get back uh, January and kind of pick up pick up right where we left off, but a lot of hockey left. Ellie Fox got that also nominated. She was actually on a D3 hockey team. How big is that for the Marion program to get, get some national publicity at a pretty high-profile media site uh, for the Marion University program? No, it's a I mean, it's one of those things too where it's like you, it's nice to see the freshmen step up and uh, fill roles that um, you kind of expect when you look at collegiate programs that seniors or upperclassmen do. So for a freshman to come in and kind of lead the way and be one of the enforcers right from the start, it's really it's special. Um, and I kind of saw that through her. I've been following her for all four years of high school. So it's one of those things where it's like, wow, I'd love to get her. And I finally did. And it's one of those like, hey, she's a big time recruit, big time commitment um, and I'm excited to have her. She came from the Green Bay area. What would you say hockey is like for, for girls hockey at the high school level in the state of Wisconsin? It's definitely grown. Um, it's not up to par with Minnesota right now but um, from when I went through the process and playing in hockey in high school to where it's at right now it's been lights out where you have kids that are competing and playing at the next level at the collegiate um, whether it's D1 or D3 but like I said um, Allie Fox was one of those players even throughout her entire high school career she's been at she's been playing at an elite level and it's nice to see it carry over. Well, coach, uh, you're five, five years here at Marion. Before that, you had stops as, as an assistant coach. Is it something from when you, did you always want to be a coach? Hockey coach? How did, how did it all come about? It's one of those things where it just kind of fell on my lap and I was fortunate enough. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, kind of meet people along the way that were able to get me into the coaching world and for me I went to school out east and I wanted to move out east and do something in business as that's my background and my undergrad um, but one day the St. Norbert program which uh, started the year I happened to graduate um, and it happened to be 10 minutes from my parents house and it was a conversation where it's like hey stop by let's have a conversation I'm like you know what sure I will next day I took the position and the, I guess the rest kind of is history. You had a pretty decorated uh, college career. Did you have a chance to play overseas at all professionally? Is that, is, did you ever have any desire to do that? Um, I probably could have had opportunities. I never looked into it. I think now if I could go back and take coaching outside of the picture, I think that would be a fun experience being able to continue your career um, post-collegiate, post-NCAA and go out and see new places, experience new cultures. Um, and for me, I love, I'm a history buff, so Europe would have been fun. But um, it's one of those things, too. Now it's grown more, and it's kind of nice seeing D3 players go out and continue their uh, playing career if they can't 
can't make a national program or they're not, uh, they can't play in the NWHL. So, Coach, if there's somebody watching this right now that would maybe want to play women's hockey at the collegiate level, what would you say to them? Why should they choose Marion? I think the biggest thing... Why Marion? I mean, it's a family atmosphere. I mean, you talk, you look across from the coaches and the athletes and the campus and the entire feel around uh, Marion University. It feels like home. Um, and it's something special where it's like you can get to know uh, your professors, you get to know other coaches where it's you go to a bigger university, you may not have that opportunity or you go to other other Division three programs where women's hockey is on one island. You have men's hockey over there where honestly, whether you're men's hockey, women's hockey, basketball or baseball, everyone's together. So it's kind of that fun atmosphere where it's athletics and not just athletics. You have your academics. It's Marion feels home. Like you get home. any time off during the, the holidays? I will make sure I have some time off. I have uh, planning to go to a Black Hawk game on Sunday, uh, but the rest it's recruiting, kind of getting ready for the second half, getting a little breather, but at the same time recruiting and kind of reevaluating the first half and planning for the second half. So um, still a lot of work to do, but I will make sure that I can enjoy Christmas and uh, spend some time with my family. How far did your recruiting base stretch? Where do you go looking for, for potential uh, Marion University Sabres? Uh, we're all over the place. I mean, obviously, Obviously, a lot of our recruiting has been in the Midwest, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Missouri. Um, but Coach Miller and I, my assistant, we took a road trip up to uh, Ontario at the start of the year, and we're watching teams from North America, all over North America. So Canada, U.S., uh, looking a lot out west too. So it's all over the place, but it's a lot of fun. And after the holiday break, you head to Minnesota for is it a tournament, just an event? Yeah, but it's just a little showcase. I uh, talked with a few coaches and needed to get in non-conference games and what better way of getting everyone together and just kind of have a little uh, showdown. So it's us, Stevens Point, St. Ben's, and then Hamlin. So um, hopefully maybe in the near future move it to Fondy and then maybe Stevens Point one year. Coach, I appreciate you giving us some time here on the Marion Coaches Show. Thank you for having me. Marion women's hockey coach Jamie Kivy. We're going to stay on women's hockey and talk with sophomore goalie Lindsay Stranis. That's coming up next on the Marion Sports Network. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. show continues here on the Marion Sports Network. I am Wade Bates. We're going to stay on Marion women's hockey right now, now and bring in sophomore goalie Lindsay Strain. It's uh, Lindsay, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Well, as we tape this, you're telling me you're just getting done with finals. How, how have finals been going for you so far? Uh, they've been good. I had three today, but um, and now I have two papers and one more, and then I'm good to go. So like, what kind of classes? Uh, tell me what your finals are in. Uh, well, I'm an exercise and sports science major, so right now I have anatomy, two ESS classes, uh, communications, and philosophy. So what has uh, what do you hope to do with the degree when you get done here at Marion? Uh, I think being an athletic trainer would be really cool. I like uh, what Kim does here at our school and being on a team aspect, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Sure, you mentioned Marion University. Can you kind of tell us how you uh, chose Marion to come and continue your, both your academic and your athletic career? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Marion was really welcoming with the whole idea of playing both hockey and softball. And Coach Draves and Coach Keevy were both really cool about that. So that definitely made me want to come here. And also, it's only like an hour away from my home. So it's nice and close for family to come. I'm playing softball. Too. What position do you play for softball? Sure, stop. Okay, now, were there a lot of opportunities to do that at many schools? Because I know a lot of times they don't like you playing two, two sports. But at Marion here, it kind of worked out? Yeah. Um, River Falls said that two sports was not an option. 
uh, Concordia I could have and St. Norbert I could have, but Marion kind of stood out because it was definitely the most welcoming. Now, uh, are you coming? Do you come from a hockey family, Lindsay? Is it one of those things where everybody in your family played hockey and you kind of joined along? No, definitely not. Um, we used to house Green Bay Gamblers in the USHL, and one of them was actually a goalie, so that's why I kind of played hockey and started it. So at what age did you start playing hockey? Uh, first grade I started, and then I probably was like goalie, like just goalie by like fourth grade. Sure, and then what What kind of drew you to goalie? Um, well, we has the goalie, mm-hmm. uh, so I thought that was interesting, and it was fun to watch. And then, I don't know, I wasn't very good at skating out, so my coach kind of made me try goalie, <laughs> and then it kind of stuck. See, I have a second grader that, that is begging to get on skates, too, and, and she's one of those things, that's her biggest problem now, is trying to skate. So maybe, right. should I give her a stick and a mask and say, hey, maybe you can play goalie? Yep, there you go. Put her in the net, and it'll stick. Were there a lot of uh, girls playing hockey when you were growing up? Uh, definitely not. No, it was very rare. And I think we were kind of made fun of a little bit. And a lot of the high school teams are co-ops because there's not enough in the school. But I think it's growing and it's coming a long way. I talk about the, you play for, is it Bay Cities? Is that the official name that you play for? Area. The Bay Area in Green Bay. Kind of talk about that co-op and, and how that worked for you in high school. Yeah, it's from a bunch of different schools, but primarily it was from like five different schools. Um, Ashwab and on Bayport were like the two main ones, Notre Dame. And um, we came a long way. It just started like two years before I got in high school. Then we actually won state my junior year. So they're still doing really well, and they could probably make state this year too. When did you start thinking about playing college hockey? Um, Probably when I – I mean, it's always been in the back of my mind, but probably like junior year, junior, sophomore year of high school. Now, at Marion here, I, I assume you played at the blue line a few times when you right. when you played high school hockey. I mean, was that a, a draw, knowing that you get to play in one of the better rinks that, that, that's around? Yeah, for sure. And we actually lost my senior year in the sectional final here, so that kind of left a bad taste. But now, obviously, it's my home, so you got to like it. Now, you have two different rinks here at Marion at the blue line family ice. And you have rink B, which is more like the NHL-style rink, and then you have rink A, which is the Olympic sheet. As a goalie, and we talk about maybe the players out on the ice, it makes a difference. As a goalie, is it different when you have the bigger sheet of ice that you're playing on? I think so, for sure. Uh, the angles are definitely different. Um, in warm-ups, I kind of had to test that out. Uh, and one of the games, actually, the very first shot went in, and from watching video, my angle was way off. So that's definitely an adjustment. But I think rink A is a lot lighter, so that's really nice. Uh, I see. I think I see the puck better on rink A. Sure, so you, you prefer to be in rink A? I do, yes. Now, you had 46 saves against Concordia College. When you get a, a game rolling like that, do you feel it? Or is there something special that you feel before a game, knowing that you're really going to have your A game? No, before a game, I prepare the same way every time. But I think I just felt really confident that day, and um, I think my team played behind me really well, which gave me more confidence, and it was kind of like I was in that zone that day. And you feel like when you get in the zone, you know you're kind of in a zone? Yeah, for sure. Okay, what's the pressure like in a game when it's like tied late, like maybe two minutes left, and maybe they pull the goalie on the other end? Can you kind of talk about the pressure you feel? Do you feel pressure in the net when, when you get in a close game late? Uh, I think that's what you play for. I think um, having that pressure on me kind of makes me want to play harder for my teammates, so I actually really enjoy that. Um, I wouldn't say it makes me more nervous. It makes me excited knowing like I can control the game at that point. Where do you think the Sabre program is right now? Because it seems like you're on the verge of you know making me able to punch through the top of this league and, and on the verge of really turning the corner. No, I think we've come a long way, especially from last year to this year. We already broke out the wins from the conference, and uh, I think we're really close to being one of the top teams. If we can find a way to stay out of the box, uh, I think we'll come out with a lot more wins here in the second half. Exactly. And so what do you do over the holidays? Because hockey is one of those sports where you get a nice break here once you, you, the semester's over and you're off until early January. What, what do you do? Uh, is, what do you do during the time uh, off? I'm definitely going to hit the gym a lot and not push myself back. So uh, definitely training in the gym. It's hard to get on the ice and that's probably not going to happen, but definitely uh, keeping my endurance up. When you talk about a goaltender endurance, how is a goaltender endurance different than, say, somebody who's, who's a, a skater's endurance? Um... I think for me, it's just more in my legs. Uh, definitely, like, they're more cardio. But um, I think still, even when we're on, like, the five-on-three kill, it's definitely you can feel uh, when you need to get more in shape. I'm going to ask you a lame and hockey question here. Is it hard to stay on your skates when you're not skating around all the time and just having to having to stay up there back when you're in the net? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> what would you say to somebody who's considering coming to Marion for academics or athletics? What would you say about Marion that, that, and why should they come? 
I think Marion is just like one big family. Like it's super welcoming and especially being on two teams, it's like I have so many different families here and everyone is just here to make sure that you're better. Uh, the way that our teams support each other, like Sabres supporting Sabres, I think that's a huge thing. And I don't think a lot of colleges do that. So I think uh, coming here definitely benefits the person in many different ways uh, by feeling welcomed. Lindsay, thank you so much for giving us some time here on the Marion Coaches Show. Marion sophomore goalie Lindsay Strainus. When the Marion Coaches Show continues, we're going to talk men's basketball head coach Mark Boyle on the Marion Sports Network. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? What's those pearly whites, man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, cute. Are you good to try? I'm fine. Hey, hey, girl, hey, girl, what's up? What's the name? What's good? What's up? How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. And welcome back to the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. I am Wade Bates. And right now we're going to bring in veteran men's basketball coach Mark Boyle. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm fine. How about yourself? Hey, coach, this is your 29th season here at Marion. Yes. When you, when you took the gig... 29 years ago did you think 29 years later you'd still you still have the same office no no i've changed i've moved uh just the second office though or actually it's the third it's the third sure and uh and so you took the gig and 29 years later first of all what has been the reason that you've kind of had the longevity here well i've just i've enjoyed the people that are here at marion and i've uh the, enjoyed the the athletes that i've been able to get here and have been able to coach and stuff like that and that's really um that's that makes it all worthwhile that uh can give you a little boost when you're you know when things aren't so good and you know you see you see real purpose to it and Sure, Coach. And, you know, most especially when they're younger, coaches are vagabonds. So they tra travel all over, kind of job to job to job. You didn't have that many jobs, did you, before you ended up at Marion? Well, no, I, I, I came to Marion from Green Bay. I was at Green Bay for three years. And then for uh, four years before that, I was at Lawrence as an assistant. And I started out while I was going to college at Eau Claire Regis. Sure. And, and, you, there and you coached at Green Bay with Coach Bennett? Yes. And what did you do for Coach? Uh, tried to do whatever I could. He was just a great guy to work for, and it was just an honor and learned so much. And uh, I did um, did some recruiting, did on the uh, you know practice on the on the court stuff, and uh, did a, handled the, like the academic sure. monitoring and stuff like that. Were you there during the years they went to the NCAA tournament? No, I got and out of there. I'm trying to do the math <laughs> yeah. backwards here now and. Uh, you were there as he came from Stevens Point. Uh, yeah, to, the first uh, the Green first Bay? three years. Yeah, his first three. Excellent. Then he ended up at Marion when the job opened up. Was it one of those things where you saw it and you thought that was going to be a place for me? Oh yeah, yeah. I knew when I when I went to Green Bay, I just uh, you know I was just honored and just at being there with Coach Ben was just great. But I knew that that was something I was like went as a volunteer and then I you know I became a part time, but I never was really rolling in the loot. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you know, if I wanted to, you know, stop living out of my car, I had to look for another job. Sure, Coach. And you end up here at Marion. One thing I was going to ask you before we kind of talk about basketball is that, you know, you've been blessed to have, you know, assistants that have been with you for a while. You know, sometimes, you know, Marcus Weger, Grant Monroe, it seems like those guys have been here forever and they're kind of, you know, they're savers for life, it almost seems like. And uh, how do you like having consistent assistance, I guess you can say, with your program? Oh, that's great. I mean, that that helps so much. And both those guys played mm -hmm. for me as well, too. So there's a, there's a lot of history there. And, uh, you know, they kind of know. They know me. I know them. Um, you know, we're all on the same page, and uh, just you know, there's friendship there, and uh, it's uh, it's what you want as a coach, really. Sure, coach. What do you look for when you look for an athlete to come to Marion? When you're looking for a recruit and finding a basketball player that's a good fit to come here to the university? Well, th there's three things. Whenever I talk to the recruits, too, I, I tell them this. You know what what we're looking for. We're looking at the first option would be what kind of athleticism or natural size or whatever. You know, what is your physical potential? 
Um, that that's real important in basketball, and it's become more and more athletic as uh, time's gone on. Then the second thing would be skill. Um, you know, what are your skills as far as shooting, passing, rebounding, able to defend, things like that. Um, and then the third thing would be, you know, coachability and character. And, and that I always tell the parents and the kids that that can be, that can trump the other two as well. Sure, Coach. How has recruiting changed from when you first started here to where it is today when you when you go trying to scour the earth for athletes? Yeah, well, when I first started off, I would go to playgrounds, uh-huh. you know, in, in, in the cities and, and uh, just uh, some of the smaller towns, they'd have, a uh, you know, at, at night kind of leagues or whatever. And uh, I, I, I'd go to those. There was nothing on, you know, there was no computer, sure. you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so you'd just go word of mouth or you'd talk to coaches. You had to build up a real network as far as uh, coaches through the phone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'd end up traveling and go to, you know, tournaments. AU was just starting when I when sure. I came to Marion. And, and since then, it's just exploded. And, uh, you know, with all the recruiting you know when i first started i would probably have a pool of 40 or 50 athletes maybe that i that i stayed in touch with and now we have you know we start off with several hundred coach uh, this year's squad six of your nine games so far this year have come down to the wire whether the last few seconds are in overtime just to, what's your take on on your squad so far this season well we've got to we've just got to be able to to work things out here we're missing some little things that's keeping us from uh you know Getting over the, you know, getting in the left hand column, you know, <laughs> we've, uh, you know, it's been, it's been pretty frustrating. But the guys have have shown a lot of resilience up to this point, and and uh, you know they're they're staying together pretty well. I mean, it's we're a very young team, and uh, you know nobody's thrown in the towel. Although I certainly wouldn't expect that, but. Coach Alex Manhart, we're going to talk to him in a little bit. I think, uh, you know, he's a junior. Otherwise, everybody else in your squad this year are freshmen and sophomores. And some of the sophomores maybe didn't see big minutes uh, last season. So basically, I mean, you're in a Division three conference playing with a lot of new players. I mean, it takes a while for those guys to adjust, doesn't it? Yeah, we're pretty green. I mean, there's there's a learning curve that's involved and and uh, the guys learning to play with each other and, and the system and just uh, going against the new, you know, the, the you know, when you've got freshmen and sophomores, just the next level of uh, – of uh you know competition it's just it, it's it gets a little more fierce than what they were used to how big how big of a difference is it for a, a, a senior high school at any level high school basketball going to division three and what is the difference that 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 kids will see when they come and what's the biggest adjustment that they have to adjust to well one of the first things is they're they're going to have teammates that were all for the most part one of the better players on their team if not the best player maybe um that depends but uh, so the day-to-day competition within practice, and then they're going to go against players on other teams where, you know, that that's the same thing there. And everybody is kind of just, you know, fighting on that food chain to, to survive and to be better. And uh, the competition is, is huge. And then the, you know, the intensity also is something that's a big, I think a lot of times a big Coach, change. with all those close games, you kind of dug yourself in a little bit of a hole in the conference. Do you feel like though, there's still time for you guys to maybe uh, get things going and make a push for one of those the final playoff spots this season? Yeah, well, without uh, putting the risk that I maybe sound like I've been sniffing glue, um, I think that, uh, yeah, we still have a have a chance at it. We do. We've, we've played a couple of the tougher teams and, uh, you know, we've got quite a bit of it out in front of us yet. So we've just got to, we've got to turn the corner, but it's a, uh, it's it'll be a it'll be a challenge. Coach Benedictine coming up again this weekend. Uh, how big was it for your league to see them make the run that they made last year and make it all the way to the national final? Oh, that was great. It just you know would have preferred if it was us doing something yes. like that, but uh, they they really I mean they had a good bunch of guys. They were just a, a real quality team in the way that they played both sides of the ball and they their chemistry that they had and coach uh, did it did a great job with them mm-hmm. and and. Uh, you know that was it was a big boost for the for the league. Everybody yeah, felt a lot of pride. I had a few people who talked to me and they held you know Benedict and that is that the one in the, the Marion's league? You know, and I think that just raised the profile of the league oh, yeah. with them on the national scene, which can only help you as well as a coach, knowing that you know people can see, hey, a team from our league can go on and you know maybe win it all. Right, and we battled them real tough last year too. We played them three times, and two of those games I think were inside ten, and, and uh, you know we did it. You know, and say that those. Did that well against the team and played for the national championship. So, Coach, you play, got them on Saturday, then you come back to Finlandia at home next week, and then what do you do over? You don't have that long of a time off, but in a couple of weeks you have off. What do you do? Yeah, they'll have about, well, they'll have about six days where they'll go home, spend time with the family, just kind of recover their legs a little bit, have a few Christmas cookies, uh, you know, see, see what's up back home. And then they'll be back, and uh, 
we'll have about five, six days before our next game. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time, and I understand it was your birthday here the last couple of days, so happy birthday yeah, to you. Yeah, well, thank you, Wade. Coach, good luck. We'll see you, okay. I guess, at the games this weekend. Okay, great. Marion men's basketball coach Mark Boyle. We're going to stay on the men's basketball circuit and talk with uh, junior Alex Manhart coming up next on the Marion Sports Network. Disaster strikes without warning. What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. And welcome back to the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. I am Wade Bates. We're going to stick with men's basketball right now and bring in Marion Junior Big Man Alex Manhart. Alex, thanks for joining us here this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, first I want to ask you, you came from West Bend to Marion, correct? Correct. One of the most unique high school situations probably <laughs> in the state of Wisconsin at West Bend. You have West Bend. Are you at West Bend East? Yeah, West have, Bend East. They have at West Bend East. They have West Bend West, but they're in the same building. Yeah, same building. Um, we have a lot of the same classes together. Uh, the only really difference is um, athletics. So basically, like, you could have a class with, with I guess, West players and mm -hmm. East players together or just students in general. How, how did that all start, you know? Uh, no, I have really no idea how it started. Um, I just found it really weird that I could, uh, I could um, have class with one of the people that I'm playing the, the night of. Do you get to choose which high school you go to when you're in West Bend if you're going to be an East, uh, East student or a West student? No, it's actually um, divided up by uh, what your birthday is. Okay. So my birthday is June 2nd, um, an even birthday, so I go to East. Okay, so the even people all go to East and then the, the, the odd yeah. day birthdays all go to West. Yep, unless you have like an older brother or sister who has a birthday that's like odd or even. <laughs> that sounds very so, confusing to me. Yeah, but everybody yeah, always is. asks those questions about West Bend and how are they ever going to become one high school and become this athletic juggernaut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they plan to do that. Um, but uh, so you end up at Marion. Just how did you, how did you end up on the, the Marion men's basketball team? Um, well, I, I was recruited. Um, I, I always knew that I wanted to play college basketball. Um, when I came to tour uh, Marion, it was, it was snowing. It was really cold out. And um, I don't know. I just kind of like the uh, the small atmosphere, uh, the small school. Um, Were you familiar with Marion University when when either when when, when it was it Coach Weger, Coach Boyle, or Coach Monroe kind of made contact with you? He was actually Coach uh, Tony Draves. Oh, Tony Draves is the yeah, guy Tony who got Draves you, huh? is, Yeah. And um, so, he, what was his pitch to you? Um, his pitch, uh, just come come to Marion, um, get a good business degree, stuff like that. Uh, is that what you're studying here? Is business? Yeah, business. Yeah. So, what do you hope to do with that degree once you get it? Um. I'm not sure at this point. Um, really want to start my. I want to start my own brewery. Okay. Um, I want to learn a lot of things about marketing and stuff like that, so I can uh, uh, do my own stuff like that. Good stuff there. Now, uh, you're, you're a junior. You're one of the few upperclassmen on this year's squad. One of the juniors yeah. that are playing. How, do you feel like you have to take that leadership role? A lot of freshmen and sophomores that are seeing minutes, especially first half of the season this year. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like you have that added burden on your shoulders to be, kind of be the guy that, that sets the tone and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I really feel like that. But um, besides that, we have a lot of good guys on the team. Um, we have a lot of guys like uh, Evan Hansen, Tyrese Pinson. We're all stepping up as captains as well. Um, so it's not, not just me who's doing it all, but... Have you been involved in a season like this before? I mean, you've had six games that have gone down to the wire or in overtime that have been like buzzer beaters or before. And uh, does, what's your take been on the season so far for the Sabres as we head into this, this, this break here in the holiday? Yeah, like you said, it's, um, I've never had a season like this who came down to so many close games. Um, just really hoping we can uh, pull out a couple games. Uh, in the future, sure. You feel like uh, you feel like you're that close, and it's little things maybe that have been the difference in your, in your squad this year so far. Yeah, it's, it's really the little things, and that's something Coach Boyle always stresses: is the little things that um, will really take us to the win. 
What would you say to a potential student athlete who wants to come to Marion, whether to play basketball or just as a student or, or to uh, compete in some other sport? Um, well, I'd probably tell them that it's a great place here. Um, it's awesome. Um, a lot of people like know each other. Um, you're always really friends with every sport. Um, yeah. All right, Alex Manhart, <laughs> thank you so much for giving us some time on the Marion Coaches yeah, Show. Yeah, no problem. All right, that's Marion Junior forward Alex Manhart. When we come back, we're going to talk Marion University women's tennis on the Marion Sports Network. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T, fast. And welcome back to the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. We're going to talk tennis right now and bring in head women's tennis coach Marcus Wiegert. Coach, another great fall season for you guys as you qualified for the NAC tournament for the second consecutive season. Yeah, it was a good fall season. Uh, we finished fourth. Uh, had finished fifth last year, so it was another step in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, really finished the year very strong. Kind of started off a little bit slow, but had some tougher matches against some UW schools and, and finished the year strong. Talk about some of the women that were on your squad this fall that uh, really helped contribute to your program and your success. Yeah, I had a lot of contributions. I uh, had three girls that were all-conference. Uh, Meg Hartzell was all-conference. Uh, she played one singles, uh, one doubles. Had Mackenzie Myers, who moved up to two singles, uh, and she played – uh, one and two doubles at times, uh, and then Celeste Dijanef, uh had played some singles, but primarily um, one doubles and was all, all conference as well. So those were three of the girls, but uh, had much uh, had contributions from a ton of girls. How many how many athletes can you have? Student athletes can you have on in your tennis program? Uh, we could have as many as we wanted. Uh, typically, you need at least six. Um, say anywhere between. Six and twelve is probably a good number. Somewhere eight and twelve is, is more realistic because you're gonna have injuries and different things that happen throughout the year. So I'd say somewhere between eight and twelve uh, is a good number to have. We, we talked to a lot of the coaches here today and, and uh, through the years on the coaches show. Just what what do you look for in a student athlete? And where does your recruiting base so, you know expand to? Yeah, I think in terms of uh, fit, it's it's got to be a good person uh, that's got to mesh with our team. We have a unique kind of uh, group right now that all gets together really well. So I think making sure somebody fits that. Uh, is, is number one. Obviously, you got to be a decent tennis player and, and, and have the will to work at things. Um, primarily, we look at things anywhere from the Fox Valley uh, down to Milwaukee uh, and then Illinois. We're trying to, to dip into a little bit more. Sure. In the state of tennis, I know you get the Milwaukee area, there's a lot of good high school tennis. And even up into the Fox Valley, there's some good tennis. So when you look at, at we're, we're talking about girls and women's tennis right now, uh, is it pretty good in the state? I mean, in that area, or I, how do you describe Wisconsin tennis? Yeah, I think it is very good. Um, I think at times it's tough to get the Marion name out there just because a lot of people aren't familiar with Marion as much. Um, but the tennis wise, it, it is very good. Um, you know, whether even you're looking at some of the smaller schools that may have maybe the small private schools around the area and stuff like that, those are very good as well. Um, sometimes it's just the conversation that, you know, uh, the girls may not be familiar that, hey, this is even an option for them, um, you know, going to the next level and stuff. So um, reaching out to a wide base and then just kind of figuring out which ones, you know, fit fit the mold. How do you go about tackling that? I mean, do you just do you have to maybe pound pavement, go to events? I mean, the Internet has probably changed it quite a bit now as you promote your program and the product that we have here at Marion Yeah, there's a lot on the Internet, um, a lot of contact information that's out there. Um, I'll go to a few different events, conference tournaments, typically towards the end of the year. But if there's some girls that we know of that come to campus and visit in the summer, I'll hopefully get an opportunity to get out in the fall, um, depending on our season and where rain dates and everything like that fall. Um, we get out to see them play um, in the fall and, and if not in their uh, sectionals and things like that. Coach, we you talked a little bit earlier. You had three girls, that uh, women that made all, had all, all conference recognition in the fall part. It was a good for good for your program to have that many people, women recognized. Yeah, it was. It was a, a great recognition. I mean, finished the season strong, made the conference tournament. Are going to actually host our first conference tournament match in the spring against Aurora. 
Um, so yeah, I think the recognition is is great, and uh, hopefully continue to to climb that way. If somebody's watching, they want to come out and watch Marion Tennis. So where do you play your home meets? Uh, home matches are at uh, Buttermilk Creek Park, um, so it's a very nice park. Um, it's got a nice windscreen with the trees around the area and stuff like that. It's a great place to sit and watch some tennis. So uh, primarily play our matches. There are some indoor matches. We will go up to Oshkosh to the YMCA Tennis Center and play there. Sure, Coach. Well. How is it for you? Not only are you the, the women's tennis coach, you're the men's tennis coach, right? Mm -hmm. And you're an assistant on the basketball team. Yep. How do you juggle all those different hats in the athletic department? Not quite sure. Uh, it's just kind of whatever season we're in, that's – you know what my focus is on and try to make sure there's a good experience for everybody you know on, on all three of the teams um, but you know whatever season we're in that's the most important at that time and um, just kind of roll with it. Well, you came and played basketball here at Marion mm -hmm. and then you kind of transitioned into a coach just to what do you like about Marion what has kept you here for well, how many years have you been on campus? Uh, this is my seventh year on campus uh, worked a few years in IT a few years in admissions and this is my third year full-time in athletics but always was involved some way in athletics here um, since basically graduating and um just a small campus community you know everyone's very friendly and willing to help out one another and just a tight-knit community it's sure very do nice. you remember when uh, who, who recruited you can I ask when you were playing at anago uh, who wisconsin rapids you always took to the woodshed back in the old wisconsin valley conference days where i i went to play yes. high school but how, how did how did you get approached how did you find out about marion university um you know playing college basketball is one of the things that i wanted uh, to do um at the college level and kind of had an idea with major with sports management and at the time only a few schools had it and Marion was one of them and kind of came on my visit and just really liked things. It wasn't really recruited for basketball. It was more me kind of recruiting the school more so. Um, but, you know, love the campus tour. And like I said, kind of going back to that family, everyone was very friendly and helped one another out and just kind of grew as a student here and end up after a few years after graduation coming back and working here. So you know, the women will get back going again this spring. Does the, well, the men's season runs when? Uh, men's season is primarily in the spring. Uh, we will get together a little bit in the fall and, and hit, but uh, one of any matches. Uh, but men's season is primarily in the spring. We're actually going to take our first spring trip uh, in quite some time uh, in March with the girls and the guys. We're going to go to uh, St. Louis. Um, but the guys' season is primarily in the spring, um, you know, March and April, uh, a little bit into May, and our uh, – uh, girl season will obviously be in the fall, but then more so uh, we'll get going again in the spring and around April and then leading to conference tournament, which is either late April or early May, depending on the date and stuff like that. Coach Wieger, I know you're a busy man. I'm going to let you go. Have, thanks for stopping by. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, Wade. Marion men's and women's tennis coach Marcus Wieger. So we'll talk with Marion women's tennis player Meg Hartzell. That's coming up next on the Marion Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? Let's hit those pearly whites, man. Yeah! Ooh, cute. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. Hey, hey, girl, hey, girl, what's up? What's your name? What's good? What's up? How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing, and it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. And welcome back to the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. We're going to stay on women's tennis right now and bring in sophomore Meg Hartzell. Meg, how are you doing today? Good. How about you? Hey, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And uh, I guess you're kind of in, in between, uh, I guess, tennis seasons. Can you kind of talk about how the first half of your season went? Yeah, we made the conference tournament, so we are playing again in the spring, which is very exciting. Uh, we all came together as a team, did our part, and got the job done to make the conference tournament. Why did you choose Marion University? Uh, I'm from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, so not too far away. I wanted something close by to home. Uh, I love the campus size, the class sizes, and I was able to play tennis here as well. And is that something you were looking to play tennis at the next level? Yes, for sure. How long have you played tennis? Has it been something you've done since you were, you were a small child? Yep, I've been playing since about the age of six. So I grew up playing tennis. My dad's a big tennis player, my sister as well. 
So it's been in our family. So college tennis is something that was always kind of kind of on your mind. Yeah, my sister also played here at Marion when she attended school here, so I wanted to follow in her footsteps. Kind of talk about your season individually. Uh, talk about you're you're a singles player. Do a little bit of both. I do both. Yep, number one singles, number one doubles. Do you like being able to play singles and doubles in specific meets? I do. I like the mix. It's a good balance. How is how is it different? How is playing singles and playing doubles different? Uh, singles is a lot more work. Um, it's nice for doubles to have a partner and so it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a different type of game though, isn't it? Yeah. Very different type. What, do you, th- what do you think? The, is it, how is it, is it, how important is it to have a good chemistry with your partner in doubles? Very, very important. My doubles partner and I are super close. We're also roommates, so it works out nice. We have very good chemistry. Now, what would you say to a student athlete that is thinking about coming to Marin University maybe to play tennis? I'd say they should do it because our team bond is unbreakable. We're pretty much a family. Marcus is a great role model for us. And do you like having the split season? I do. It's nice. Uh, as you said, our main season is in the fall, mm-hmm. which we get a lot of it done with. And it's a nice break. And then spring, it's nice to be back at it again. So how much time do you get to work out? Where do you fi- like in winters in Wisconsin, where do you find uh, to play tennis this time of year to stay in shape? Uh, indoor facilities. Otherwise, I try and go to the gym every day just to stay in shape as well. Meg, I appreciate you giving us some time here, and uh, good luck, I guess. Uh, when do you get started up going again? Uh, early March. All right. Meg Hartzell, sophomore tennis player here as we continue on in the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Marion University Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. I am Wade Bates. Thank you much for listening tonight. We need to thank head men's lacrosse coach Reed Mayberry for joining us. Also, Jamie Kivy, the women's hockey coach, along with sophomore goalie Lindsey Stranis. Mark Boyle, the head men's basketball coach. Also a fun talking to him about his uh, long tenure here at Marion University. Alex Manhart, the junior center, also gave us some insight on the Marion men's basketball team. Marcus Wiegert, the men's and women's tennis coach. Thank him for stopping by. Also tennis player, Meg Hartzell. Now, if you're interested in anything going on with Marion University, maybe you're a potential student athlete, or you're just interested in the Sabres in general, please visit our website, saberathletics.com. You have been watching the Marion Coaches Show on the Marion Sports Network. Have yourself a great night.